In this video, we're going to explore how we can use a API. And in this case, I'm going to use rapid API, but we're going to use a free version. You don't need to put any payments uh, options in there. All you need is having an account active at rapid API, which is, which you can register for free. And uh, what we're going to do is basically getting the airline name, the airline IATA code, and then some other additional thing, for example, the website here. So let's start to look how we can use an API to connect it with our JavaScript and extract data from that. So let's start to look how to use the API for beginners in JavaScript and HTML with Rapid API. So Rapid API is very useful because with Rapid API, as you can see here, we can use the code here. Basically, I'm going to use this specific item here. If I go back here, you can see here how to find this. Go to the flight data API. And this is an important message is make sure you log in. If you're not logged in, you won't get the key here or the secret key. And what we're going to grab is this free option here, as you can see here, it shows it's free and just only get the free ones for now. The freemium here requires a credit card usually. So that's why I'm just going to recommend you get the free ones. When you log in, you don't need to put any financial details in there. Just click on one of these, it's free, all right? Take some time to load and then it gives us the information. And what I want to get here is basically scroll down here and I just get the basic JavaScript file. Fetch, there we are. And you can see here, it says here, sign up for getting the key here. So you need to sign up for that or log, be logged in. I'm going to copy this entire code here. And what will happen now is, well, first of all, I'm going to say HTML. There we are. So you get the HTML items. And then I'm going to say here, uh, the JavaScript or script. All right, and then we're going to put in here the items. So if I save this and then I'm going to refresh, it might work for me because it just loads the thing in the memory or basically loads the secret key in the memory. However, if I change it, basically I have here a JavaScript file with constant equals secret key. I'm going to use this. And the reason why I'm doing this is because they recommend you to keep the key a secret because especially if you have financial data connected with that, then, well, it should, no one should know that, of course. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it in here. So we have the secret key reference to another JavaScript file. Of course, if I save this, it will give an error here. And if you have any other item here, I think if I do here, just ABC save, maybe it will say here, oh, it just recognized it, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, especially if you're a first time user, it doesn't, and then it will say, please register or log in to use a proper secret key. So I'm going to use this one here, but of course, if I save this and refresh, it says here, sorry, secret key is not defined. The reason why is I didn't define this specific key here because it's a JavaScript file. So what I'm going to do here, just here above, so it will load this first. So I'm going to say script, and then I'm going to say here, uh, source equals, and then I need to get the source of secret key. What I will do is just copy this, put it in there. And of course, you don't have to do that one, but I'm just going to Remember, because I know this is the source code or the file uh, with a file store. So I'm going to say here, secret, secret key, save, refresh. Now it recognizes everything is fine, beautiful. So now we have this here, but you can see there's a massive amount of arrays here. And I'm, I'm very deep into the um, airline industry, or at least I understand these things because I use it quite often. You can see here, there's like what we call an IATA code. Basically, IATA code is a two digit code referring to the specific airline. And you can try to search your specific airline here. Then you can see here the matching name. So uh, let's try and get some more familiar airlines. What we can do here is because this here shows us every airline available, but that's maybe too much. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna click on this. And you can say here the IATA code, and then you can specify a specific one. And if I'm not mistaken, KL stands for KLM. So I'm going to do a test point here, click on this, and see if it finds anything here. All right, interesting. Of course, I cannot do that here, I realize. Um, I need to uh, put it on my source here because I... So what is happening here is basically when I click on this or test this, normally you should see here the result. I am not logged in here, and the reason I'm not logged in is it's not, it will show here, of course, my secret key. So what I'm going to do is, very simple, I'm going to go here back to JavaScript, fetch. We have all of these items here, and you can see here now, it shows here the IATA code 
showing the specific one. So what we could do is just copy this airline here. If I copy this, put it in there. So we see here airlines, but remember, we're going to look for a single one. So I'm going to remove that and it will be airline. And we're going to paste here question mark to search for it. IATA code is KL. So we have to see if KL caps locks will impact it. So if I save this now, then I refresh this. There we are. All right. So we have no. All right. You're not subscribed to this. Uh, of course. So the reason why probably I didn't put my secret key yet in there. Let's do that one here because it's still here on ABC. All right. I'm going to put that in there right now. So once I put in my secret key with the right command, refresh, you will see here now we get a response. Let's see if the response is correct. I should find here KOM Royal Dutch Airlines. And you can see here, you can click on this, we can find one specific one, KOM, and that's the full name apparently. And the AATA code is KL and the Alliance is Sky Team. So this is quite interesting because we could find another one as well. So for example, if you're looking for another very famous airline I use often, it's 5J. If I save this, and this is a large airline company in the Philippines, refresh, click on this, we get here the value alliance, and this should be Cebu Pacific. There we are. And there are many more, and uh, American Airlines, I think that's AA, if I'm not mistaken. So let's try that one, save that, refresh. All right, we get a response. This is from the uh, Alliance One World, and you see here AAL, American Airlines. So now we have this here, and even that identifies itself as a low cost carrier, yes or no, or true or false. In this case, false, it is not considered a low cost uh, air carrier because it is a GDS airline. So what we're going to do now is, because we have this information here, and you have some understanding of the airline industry, but who cares about that? Let's go and get some results. So what I'm going to do here is we have this response here. This response here, what we truly get, we just copy and paste this stuff. We're fetching this data from the URL. And then we say here, we want to look for a specific airline here. And the options is just a reference to this here. So now what we want to do here is basically the following. Well, well, basically here, grab the data and convert it into a JSON readable format. Or parse it, parse the JSON into a readable format. So once we have this, we get the response here. And if ever there would be an error, it would indicate the error. So we have this response here, that's the console log. But maybe you say, well, hold on. We get this in the console log. How do we insert it just simply in here? All right, quite simple. I'm going to just, we're going to maintain that console log. I'm going to put in curly braces. I'm going to put here, enter, and put another enter in here. And then enter, and I'm going to say here the following. We're going to put in this item here, and then I'm going to say here, constant. What we're going to do is we're going to create a element. And I'm going to the P element, I'm going to say document dot create element. And then here, the P or the paragraph. I put it in caps lock, but you don't have to do it. You can do it in single, uh, uh, small letters as well. It doesn't matter. But it must be in quotations because it's a string value. Well, what we want to do is when we have this paragraph, you want to append it. And appending means attach it to. So what we want to do here, let's make it very simple. Uh, let's say here div. In this div, I'm going to give it an ID. And let's say here equals the text ID. Very simple, nothing fancy. So I say here, hello, save, refresh. All right, so there we are. We get this. So that looks quite nice. And then I notice we have this title here. Let's put this title in here. Save, refresh. All right, and let me just increase this a bit. We see here, hello. That's all right, that's nice. But of course, that's very basic here. What I want to do now is I want to start to get the response from this. Because you will see here, if I open up the developer tab, and maybe just expand this as well, so it's easier to read for you. So you can see here, we get this information here, and let's grab a few items. I want the IATA code from this to show in here instead of hello. So we have this paragraph. And then what I want to do here is, first of all, let's append the uh, paragraph into this ID here, or the text div. So we're going to say here, uh, we can do it just here, maybe above, we say constant document dot, oh no, not, not like that. I'm going to say here, text div equals document dot get element by ID. And then we're going to say here, text. So we have this one. And then what I want to do is 
dot and then we say yeah, append child. So basically what we're doing here is we're dealing with the parent element and then we have here a child element and you can just see the child element should be always nested within this div here. So it's very straightforward. So what I'm going to say here append the child of p. All right. So if I save this now and before I even save this, I'm going to click here on the inspector element. You can see here there is no paragraph in here. So if I refresh now, there is a item is hello. But if I click on this, there is now also a paragraph included. What I want to do now is to insert this airline code into that paragraph here or the IATA code. Let's grab this IATA code. But remember, it's index zero. So it means there's only one result, of course. It should be because it's a unique code. So there should be not two results or else we have a, un well, it's not unique. So what we're going to do here is, I'm going to say the next one is constant. I'm going to say here, P text, simple. And here we're going to say here, document dot create uh, text note. And what we're going to do here is basically, we can say here, first of all, hello, just to see here, hello too. And if I do this, what will happen is if I'm going to do that, what I need to do here, in the paragraph, I need to say here, append child as well. But what we want to do now is not anymore the child, well, the P or the paragraph is the parent and the child is now the text note. So we're going to put in the text in here. So if I save this, we should see here now, hello, number two. All right, so that works nicely. So now what I want to do is, I want to grab here the specific items. So I say index zero, and then let's get the IATA code. So I'm going to say here, instead of hello number two, I'm going to say here, this will be the response. Well, you can see here how it will be if I would do it like that. You can see it like this. So if I want to get specifically, I say index zero. Remember, the response is this, index zero. And then we do here dot IATA code. If I save that, refresh, it only gets here the AA or American Airlines. So let's grab this and put that in here. So save that, refresh, and now we have AA in here. So what I want to do now is let's get uh, one of my favorite airlines that I use often. It's 5J. Going to put that in there. See here, 5J. All right. Then what I want to do is just add in some additional items. So you can imagine besides only the IATA code, what I would like to have is, for example, the company name. In this case, it's Cebu Pacific. Let's grab this name and we can maybe even grab the website as well. So let's copy this. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to make another paragraph, so I'm going to copy this, put it down here. But here, this must be unique as well, or else it will be attached within the same paragraph. Could be desirable, but maybe not. So what we can say here now is number two. It's also a paragraph tag. Then here, text number two, or let's say here, company name. And this should be just, instead of IATA code, it should be name, like that, name, civil Pacific. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say here, copy this, put it in there, put number two in here. And of course, for this one, same as well, but now paragraph number two, and we're going to put in the paragraph name, which is this text note here, save, refresh, and there we are. Look, now we are getting a lot more details here. That looks quite nice. So what we could do here, maybe is another one, maybe the website, or we can put this all together. So what we could do here, that's quite simple, is we can copy this. We could even do here a uh, the text here. What we can do here is basically say IATA code, and we can do here, well, let's make it simple. I'm going to use a uh, template literals. So we're going to use back, back tick, back tick, which is on your keyboard below your escape button. And I'm going to say a dollar sign. I'm going to put in this. And then we say colon, and I'm going to put in the company name as well, which should be also because this is like a string or a text that's being just shown. And then here again, here, another variable, which is this variable. And if I save that, refresh, you can see here now, 5J equals Civil Pacific. And then we have the name here. We could put in the website name, anything else we could add up in here. So if we do, for example, a website, quite straightforward. When you put in here, I'm going to say A. This is the anchor tag. 
and then here what we're going to say here constant let's do here the website name so we say here a name or a website and then let's look at this where do we get that put it in here website we say here this is the text node but then what i want to do here is this dot source or uh, is it source or href it's one or the other most likely it's source and then what i want to do here is just grab this one here put it in there so this will Im immediately trigger the attribute within the h or the anchor tag but this here needs to be appended because this is the text within here so what i'm going to do here is um let's say here the text div then we will append the child of a which is the anchor tag and then what we want to do as well is we can just copy this one here and then we say here append the a with the text node of a website i save that refresh <clears throat> oh sorry and then the website i guess we're missing something here uh website here all right so what is the issue let's look at it apparently i forgot to put in the full source which is the response index zero dot website save refresh there we are all right so we have this here and then i guess we are not having here the href item so let's look at that we get here and the source here let me double check all right so after checking i realized this is my bad i'm working too much with javascript where i use a lot of source but it should be href which is of course the standard way of how we put that in there so it's a href and if you do this refresh here you can see here now and if you click on this uh all right interesting we get the link here but i guess the link here source is not fully correct uh it goes directly in there so let's see what's going on here why are we getting the object here supposed to be this item here uh you have do uh, document text note let's see. so what we have to do of course this is my bad because what is happening i'm creating a text note object so we don't want to do that what i want to do is i want to get of course the official link here that's why if we click on this right now it oh this one works of course because i already tested it but if i click on this it will see here the object in the text now don't want to do that of course we want to just get the website save refresh i'll go back here let's refresh and now you can see here if i click on this source here you'll see it is Cebu pacific as the official website click on this there we are but what is very nice here is if i for example change this so let's say here now we have here kl for klm refresh and all right interesting it doesn't have a website so we can double check if that is really true in this case there is no website available so uh we can get any other airline here as well uh, let's uh, get aa if i save that refresh there we are and then even with australia i don't know why that should be just american airline i guess but anyway this is how we can use just the source code itself or at least the api to extract data and make something very simple here a bit dynamic which is absolutely phenomenal